Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been watching the channel now, especially in the last few weeks, you know we've been really, really pounding away at all the legislative stuff that's coming out of Olympia. And there are some pretty extreme ideas, and there are some bills which are advancing through the legislature and have a very good chance of becoming law. One of those bills is Substitute Senate Bill 5078, which has already passed out of the Senate and is now in the House. That is a high-capacity magazine restriction. That bill had a public hearing last week. Many of you participated. Some of you may have had a chance to watch, but if you didn't, don't worry, because we're going to do a little highlight reel right now for you. So let's talk about how the public weighs in on Senate Bill 5078. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below if you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, especially during this legislative session. Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming, especially on this legislative stuff. That's how we're going to make sure we're getting our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, so uh, last week uh, we had a hearing before the House Judiciary Committee down in Olympia about Senate Bill 5078, and it was chock full of all sorts of highlights, and we're going to kind of cut through some of the minutia of the hearing and give you some of the highlights so you can get an understanding of what the public hearing was like. Now, before we get there, I want you to know that the written comments, and this, of course, comes from our legislative warrior Chess Lover, let's give it out to uh, give a shout out to Chess Lover because this guy has been a legislative gladiator for us. Um, but apparently, we had close to about 900 comments in support of the bill and somewhere short of 15,000 comments against the bill. So, kudos to all you lawful and responsible gun owners out there for getting the word out. Okay, to kick off public testimony, why not? Let's have somebody from the Attorney General's office, that is Karen Baneski, who starts things off on behalf of your Attorney General, Bob Ferguson, as follows. The Attorney General's office strongly supports this legislation that will make our communities safer. You may hear today that this bill won't improve public safety, but the evidence shows otherwise. Recent studies show that states without large capacity magazine restrictions have twice the rate of high fatality mass shootings and three times the number of shooting casualties. You may hear that these magazines are standard, but over 93 million people live in the nine states that already restrict magazines with more than 10 rounds. You may hear that criminals will ignore this law, but retailers and licensed dealers will comply, which will reduce access as with bans on other military style weapons. We ask that you please advance this bill that will reduce mass shootings, save lives and make Washington a safer place to live. And as you can see, the Assistant Attorney General captured all of the talking points perfectly as written in the Attorney General's memo to the Democrats about two and a half months ago. We've already shared a link to that down below in previous videos. Now, always concerned for community safety and a stalwart of ensuring that our communities remain safe, we should always defer to a member of the Seattle City Council. And who better to defer to than Miss Lisa Herbold. She said the following. I am a Seattle City Council member and I'm a grandmother. I mentioned grandmother with the gunfire in mine last week, before last, in my council district, resulting in nearby Chief Self International High School and many international middle school students sheltering in place. This is a frequent occurrence. The victims of gun violence are disproportionately African American and they're all of our children grandchildren, our brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, and cousins. This is a public health crisis, and the easy access to magazines holding more than 10 rounds puts our families and communities at great risk. Lives have been saved during a pause to reload. Well, it's a shame that that has become part of the everyday life in the city that Miss Herbold herself is in charge of managing, and perhaps the high-capacity magazines are the problem. But Maybe, I don't know, defunding the police department, running uh, hundreds of officers off the street, having perhaps one of the most under-policed cities in all of America. Perhaps your catch and release policy of criminals that has become synonymous with the city of Seattle might have something else to do to, with it, but I digress. Now, interestingly, Representative Brad Clippert from over in the Tri-Cities, a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights, asked her a follow-up question, which included the following. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Herbold, 
Um, you stated in your testimony that high capacity magazines put my family at complete risk. Could you please qualify that statement? What did you mean by that? How does that put my family at complete risk? Put, it puts all of our families at risk, at great risk, and all of our communities at great risk because, um, as, as mentioned, the high capacity magazines uh, do not have the ability for lives to be saved because there are no pa pauses uh, that are used with other types of ammunition and no ability for people to escape during the times that a shooter would otherwise be reloading their gun. Now, I'm going to play a, a series of arguments against this bill, and, and they're excellent arguments, and I think they're arguments that many of us don't ever think of. Um, the, the routine fallback position anytime uh, government is trying to restrict our Second Amendment rights is to immediately stand up and say, no, you can't do it, that's my rights. And yes, I'm not saying that's a bad argument, but that's kind of our just gut instinct to immediately go to that. There are people in the Second Amendment community who have had a much different experience of law enforcement and society as a gen in general compared to many of us. And I want to play all of these comments because I think they are really, really worth hearing as to various other reasons why this is a bad piece of legislation. I live in the shadow of Tacoma's Chinese Reconciliation Park. In 1885, city leaders, law enforcement, and a mob of armed citizens lynched and drove out East Asians out of this city. The park is a memorial for those racist days. I work in diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice within many POC communities. To ensure that those days will not happen again, this bill further diminishes the abilities of those communities to defend themselves without help from the state. 5078 sows even greater distrust of the police and civic leaders because research shows that these communities face the largest prosecutions for nonviolent possession across the United States, not just the state. And I'm from District 37. I am proud to be a first-generation Korean immigrant, lesbian, minority woman. I am asking the House of Representatives today to reject ESSB 5078. This bill is wrong. It is racist, xenophobic, homophobic, transphobic, and anti-feminist. Being only 4 foot 11 lesbian minority, this bill, if approved, will be a death sentence for not only myself, but for those that are in the same category as me. With the lack of police being able to protect the community, a 10-round magazine is insufficient for me. From a man who's six foot two, weighing in at 250 pounds, I heard from the Senate floor that this isn't a woman's issue, but a public safety issue. That is, in fact, a false narrative. Women issue and public safety issue go hand in hand. Who will protect us but ourselves? If this bill is passed, you will see an increase of hate crime towards someone like me. If this bill is passed, then I am nothing more than a statistic towards hate crime against Asians, towards the LGBT community towards women and towards immigrants. Thank you for your time. My wife and I are immigrants from Iran and we live in District 5. We came to the U.S. to escape violence and oppression from the regime in Iran and we became U.S. citizens just last year. We have seen and experienced um, firsthand the oppression of minorities by the majorities. We have seen what happens when violence is unchecked and without consequence and we are afraid of the increasing number of criminal activities and violence around us and we are appalled at the inability of the police to respond immediately. We purchased firearms to protect our lives and that of our soon-to-be-born child. Just last week, a good Samaritan coming to rescue of a deputy in Washington, uh, in Whatcom County, emptied an entire magazine trying to stop a single attacker before dragging the injured deputy to safety. And statistically, the simple majority of all violent crimes are committed by more than one assailant. The average number of home invaders is two to five. And this bill will put people like us in a disadvantage in a criminal attack. And, and two more really well thought out comments. The first one comes from a gentleman named Andrew Weiss. Second one from a gentleman named Dana Morgan. And I apologize for some of the language that Mr. Morgan uses, but this is blunt and this is truthful and this is real. And these are both powerful pieces of testimony. So check this out. Washington is becoming more diverse with many minorities moving in. This diversity is awesome, but it's scary to some. Some racist people choose to close the doors on people like me when we go to get a job. Other times they close the doors when we go to get a gun. There are huge numbers of BIPOC people purchasing their first guns and applying for permits to carry. After generations of the white people doing the same, now you want to close the door. Moved in after the law was passed, no rights for you. Didn't have the money until the law was passed, you shouldn't have been broke. You don't get to protect your family. With this bill, you're exacerbating the divide between the largely white, long-time Washingtonians and minorities. The majority of people arrested for nonviolent crimes like the ones you want to create today uh, are minorities. Y'all in the old guard have enjoyed full rights for many generations. You had time to stock up on guns, ammo, and magazines. You had generations of freedom to move to a safe neighborhood, 
and develop the intergenerational wealth. But now you want to close the door on us. And I live in the 27th district and I oppose ESSB 5078 because we still live in a world where some people would rather call me a nigger instead of calling me a man. Those people would rather I be pronounced dead instead of being pronounced king. I owe a debt to all the people that march for the rights I have today. The same people that were hosed down, attacked by dogs, brutalized, and murdered by agents of the state because they stood steadfast against their government to tell them that they were not second-class citizens. Your proposed legislation creates second-class citizens and seeks to eradicate commonly owned tools, give us as much advantage as possible to defend ourselves and our communities. We know that you recognize these tools as advantageous, or else you would propose that these agents of the states no longer be allowed to have them as well. We recognize your long-term plan. We recognize that you desire for us to be at a disadvantage. By supporting this bill, you place yourself in a long line of bigots and racists. Now, of course, the arguments for are always the most sensational, gut-wrenching, gory stories that we can possibly come up with. Take, for example, Snohomish County Prosecuting Attorney Adam Cornell. I urge you to support Senate Bill 5078. Before I was the elected prosecutor, I was a deputy prosecuting attorney who responded to the scene of the Muckleteo mass shooting on July 30th of 2016. I saw with my own eyes three beautiful dead children. I subsequently met with the families of those affected, including Will Kramer, Anna, Jake, and Jordan's families, and did my best to prosecute that case. That will never bring back Anna, Jake, and Jordan. An AR-15 equipped with a high-capacity magazine caused that horror. You honor the memory of Anna, Jake, and Jordan, and will continue to do so, and I ask you to do the same. And in another piece of testimony, Amy Strahan, a grieving mother, uh, testified as follows. Uh, I have been here before, um, and I'll come again every time, uh, because my sweet son, Sam Strahan, was shot and killed at Freeman High School on September 13th, 2017. Uh, Sam was just 15, and he had his whole life in front of him. He missed all the high school experiences. Uh, he has missed countless holidays and important family events, all of which are not the same without him being here. But just imagine had his AR-15 not jammed. It would have likely been the most gruesome school shooting in history. I am one of far too many who have lost their children so suddenly and so tragically. It has to stop. And there were more horror stories from Anne Marie Parsons and Robert Schertrop, who testified as follows. We lost our daughter Terry in the Las Vegas shooting in 2017. We will always suffer that loss. I know and I think all of you know that shootings involving assault weapons and high capacity magazines continue to happen in our country. Existing laws make these types of shootings inevitable. It is the job of this body to create laws to prevent this kind of unnecessary death. Eight states and the District of Columbia have already banned high capacity magazines. We urge you to pass this bill so that other families do not have to go through what we have gone through and what we continue to go through. My sister, Carmen Chentra, was murdered at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Carmen was a beautiful, caring, funny, brilliant, and musically talented 16-year-old senior. She dreamed of going to prom, attending college, becoming a medical researcher, and finding a cure for ALS, and having a family of her own. But on Valentine's Day, 2018, a former student with an AR-15 and, and multiple high-capacity magazines quickly ended Carmen's dreams. Carmen was among the 11 killed on the first floor. Still fully armed, the shooter continued his rampage, where he murdered six more and injured four more within another two minutes. I hope that my testimony today provides some clarity on the real world impacts of allowing high capacity magazines. And I implore you to pass SB 5078. And, and as you can see here, they, they, these are out of state incidents and they do, they, they are gut wrenching incidents. But the problem for these arguments on both sides 
is, is that the emotions and the feelings that these witnesses are testifying to are real. They're real. We cannot put ourselves in those people's position. We have not Fortunately, most of us have probably not had a loved one who's been the victim of gun violence like that. And you can't imagine what it's like to go through something like that. So what these people are testifying to is not so much their opinion, their legal opinion on why this piece of law is going to be effective, but they're talking about their feelings, why they feel so enraged and how much better they will feel if this law is passed. And the problem is, and for any of you who've been to marriage counseling, you know this, is feelings is something we can't debate. If, if one of these witnesses tells you how terrified, horrified, or mortified they are, there's no debating that. They probably are in fact that way, and there's nothing we can say or do about that other than to respect how they feel. But these arguments are not particularly intellectual arguments, which again, this is a debate about a significant piece of legislation. Now, you want to get into a more intellectual argument, well, listen to Dr. Fred Rivera, who I thought this was an effective piece of testimony in favor of the bill. Thanks very much, Professor Hanson. My name is Dr. Fred Rivera. I'm a professor of pediatrics at the University of Washington and director of the Firearm Injury Policy Research Program at Harvard Medical Center. I've been studying gun violence for more than 30 years. Excessively large capacity magazines increase the lethality of any firearm to which they are attached by making it simpler for a shooter to fire more rounds at a target and do it faster. It's important to realize that when a high capacity magazine is used in a shooting, there are twice as many fatalities and 14 times as many injuries per incident. This bill will reduce the scope of gun violence in our state. It will prevent needless injury and death, and I urge you to support it. Thank you very much. Now, as persuasive as Dr. Rivera was for the bill, let's take a look at what Spokane County Sheriff Ozzy Knezevich had to say, because he had some excellent points. Thank you. In reference to the high-capacity magazine ban, I hear a lot of testimony that in states that have these bans, that... Um, you don't have a lot of violence or mass shootings. That is not correct. There is no evidence that this type of law is going to decrease the violence in the state of Washington. None whatsoever. If we think that we're going to get ourselves out of this problem by banning magazines, you're wrong. The way we get ourselves out of this problem is to enforce our laws and make it painful to commit gun crime. Mass shooting is happening at uh, a frightening level, and much of that comes from gang and drug activity. The day we start dealing with those issues, you will see the gun violence in this country go down. As I just testified, there's no way you're going to keep high-capacity magazines out of people who want to commit these type of crimes. We can't even keep drugs out of the hands of our kids, and you think you're going to keep high-capacity magazines out of their, their hands? These, guys, these type of laws will not work, and if you look at the polling that is out there for law enforcement CEOs. Every year a poll is done, and law enforcement CEOs, I mean chiefs and sheriffs, do not support these type of laws. Okay, towards the tail end, we actually got to hear from Abaheen Klein. She is the Washington State Representative to the NRA, and she very uh, eloquently testified to the following points. I stand figuratively before you today on behalf of more than five million NRA members. I stand with more than 15,000 Washingtonians who have contacted this committee today to strongly oppose the Second Amendment infringement that is ESSB 5078. And I stand firmly in defense of future Washingtonians whose rights are being stripped by this body before they've ever been born. A congressionally mandated study on the federal ban of magazines over 10 rounds and subsequent re research by the Rand Corporation found no conclusive evidence that they had any effect on mass shootings or violent crime. Through amendments in the Senate, the NRA is also concerned that the definition of distribute would prohibit loans and gifts to which temporary transactions are likely included. Thank you, I urge a no vote. And, and finally, I want you to hear from Dana Mitchell. Now, this is a whole perspective on what this bill is gonna do. You know, a lot of us are thinking about what this bill is gonna do to us individually, gun owners, lawful and responsible gun owners. What we need to start thinking about is our allies in the Second Amendment community. I'm talking about your neighborhood FFLs. 
okay? Because this bill has an emergency enactment date. If it passes, it's going into law here in just a few months. And I don't think we realize to a retail operation, often which operates on a paper thin margin to begin with, what kind of a devastating impact this could have on the FFL industry, especially your small ma and pop stores. Listen to what Mr. Mitchell had to say here. This bill will have a devastating impact upon small businesses statewide. It prevents pawn shops from returning pawned items. It destroys the competition circuit and training opportunities. In border regions such as mine, citizens will simply step across the state line and make their purchases since this ban is completely unenforceable. The July 1st implementation date is a totally inadequate time frame to sell our existing inventory on hand. It's important to note that correlation is not causation. Standard capacity magazines are the most popular magazine serving the most popular firearms available in the largest numbers for decades. Correlating shootings and mass magazine capacity is simply a statistical manipulation for political gain. Nearly 80% of the firearms in our store come with a standard capacity magazine ranging from 12 to 30 rounds. We have roughly a thousand firearms that fall into this category as they are the most common firearms and magazines sold in the U.S. today. With my current inventory turn rate, this bill will cost me roughly $135,000 upon implementation just to replace the magazines. This bill totally fails to exist existing inventories as smaller retailers need at least a year to turn that inventory or it will destroy many businesses and families. So that's your brief summary of the public testimony on Senate Bill 5078. Now, if you want to geek out and watch the whole thing, we'll put the link for that down below. Listen, you may have more questions about this bill, any other bill kicking around in Olympia, or anything related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.